Hello, beloved brethren. I hope you're all doing well. Praise our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Christ in us, the hope of glory. Hallelujah. Give him all praise, honor, and glory. The seed of the word. The word was with God and the word was God. Praise him. That seed is in you, in your heart. God wants the land of your heart returned to him by faith in his son. Hallelujah. Because it's, Jesus said that You'll see the Son of Man and the angels of heaven ascending and descending upon him. All glory to our God, Lord in heaven, as 1 Corinthians 15 says, the last Adam, hallelujah. We are flesh of his flesh and bone of his bone, hallelujah. New earth, beloved. Old things have passed away, all things have become new hallelujah we are living stones created in christ and that chief cornerstone praise his name hallelujah who has become the head as first corinthians 15 says he is the lord in heaven our head and we need to put on christ when we believe we put him on and that that is the most important part of a believer's life that the enemy wants to hide from the believers and they want us to be sin conscience conscious because they have studied psychology they have studied the mind they have studied our bodies they studied what moves us they've asked our families questions in schools about our families about our lives what we like what we dislike the enemy has studied us beloved but they did not realize that the mind of christ is greater than the mind of the carnal flesh hallelujah and he the lord in heaven his mind he remains beloved so when the enemy comes in like a flood with ungodly men's words with um, ungodly men we see in um, the epistle of jude with the wicked who work for the devil who trouble us and and all these things like a raging wave of the sea the storm makers the chaos makers in our life we can rest in the ark of the covenant with jesus christ under the blood of the lamb of god and let his rivers of living waters flow in our hearts and give us peace some people call it shalom <clears throat> hallelujah because you see all the different movements in the world the chaos in the world the trouble in the world God Jesus said peace I live leave with you my peace I give you not as the world gives you do I give you <laughs> beloved God's peace is very different than the world's peace. The scriptures say in the Psalms of David that they, when I am for peace, they are for war. And Jesus even repeats that. You see these wicked people come to us as our, they, they pretend to be all nice and they're really just after troubling our hearts, troubling our families, troubling our children, troubling our finances, troubling everything in our life because they studied us. They know what you like. You hit your like button on all those things. You put your family's pictures up there. I do the same thing. We've all been, when since I was little in kindergarten, I think they were asking me about my family. And they wanted to know, wanted us to draw our house and what's in our house. They wanted to study everything about us. They even did these little tests on your ears. They did a little frequency testing. You know, be on one, and you're supposed to say, they were testing what our frequency is in our own body. Oh, yes, the towers of Babel, the devil, the mystery Babylon, Babylon's towers have been exalted and they have come in through the eyes, ears, and all around us. These psychologists who want to do the brain initiative program and work with your brain and get in your brain and your heart and through your eyes and everything else, all just to trouble us. <laughs> so if you think you're going to have peace with this world, you got another thing coming. They have studied us. They know how to make us feel vexed and troubled and all that stuff. The peace that we have is from the Prince of Peace. That's why when Peter got on the on the sea with Jesus, he, he started sinking because he saw the trouble in the world, took his focus off of Jesus, and then started sinking. And when they were in the, the ship with Jesus, he was sleeping all peaceful. <laughs> woke him up and said wait a minute don't you see this the sea is storming we're gonna crash we're gonna sink you know uh we're on the ark right now and there's quite a few different types of people and some are resting in the our beloved hope some are troubled 
Some are out on the sea with Jesus. Some are sinking. There's all sorts of things happening. But you have to realize that you're in the Son of Man. The most important part of our faith is remaining in Him and focusing on Him. Because if you don't, then your mind can be troubled by these ones who have studied us, who constantly make a sin conscience. This is good, this is evil, this is good, this is evil. Constant back and forth with your mind. It is like a game of ping pong with us. They play the game, but God has them in derision. They are the ones that he will sweep them with the bosom of destruction, beloved. They are the ones that aren't on brooms, the witches. They know what they're doing. They know what they're doing, don't they? They know how to trouble the sea, the sea of people. They know how to bring storms. Jesus rebuked the storm, and so do I, in the name of Jesus. And calm the sea. All right. So, this is so awesome. We see in Matthew 25, 30, 31, When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So, when he was here, he said, You will see the Son of Man and the angels ascending and descending upon him. So, who is it that we are in? We are in Christ, the body, one body, one faith, one hope, one spirit. We are in one. He is our head. And the rivers of living waters flow through him into our bellies. Because where are we? We are in that spirit. Heaven is, heaven is righteousness, peace, and joy. Hallelujah. In the Holy Spirit. Where does the Holy Spirit come from? From above, from above, God says to his people, you have forsaken me rivers of living waters and you have hewn out yourself cisterns who cannot hold water. So Jesus was telling us something in the Old Testament through his prophets that if you try to come by your own works, by your own body, you're like a cistern, a broken cistern. God one time showed me this, this experience. I was in this temple and it was all like a, like a, a, a broken down temple. Like a, we call them, um, oh, what are they all? Ruins. We call them old ruins. And there were, I was with a bunch of people and we were walking along the side of this temple and they were going around it and the water was right there. And I'm like, why don't I just jump in the water? So I jumped in the water and I was started swimming around to get to the other side. We were trying to get to the other side. <clears throat> and along the way, there were serpents. And they didn't, I don't know if they tried to bite me or what, but I just, you know, got to the other side and the other people were still walking around trying to avoid the water. And, um, but I'm sure we both made it over there, but you have to wash in the word of God. And beware that there are people that want to speak in our ears that are going to try to teach us the word of God rather than listening to the word of God. But that water, it, it has bitterness in it. You need the water from heaven. See, that is that, that pool of water that we were in, it has the word of God. But God showed me later that there's water from heaven flowing through Jesus and his body is not broken. So he says that he, you know, goes, I will tear this temple down and in three days you will raise it up. Okay. He resurrected. Jesus said that to the Pharisees and to the people. And so they didn't know he, he was talking about his body. So our old body cannot hold, uh, the water. First of all, secondly, we have been in churches where serpents have tried to give us the word of of God. Now, God says that, that there's wolves in sheep's clothing and tares amongst the wheat. So we know what they are now. Matthew 23 shows us they're hypocrites, but they come in with twisting of the word. And Jesus said, you know, listen to the word, but don't follow them. So I did and I kept going. But we have better water, better water. That water cannot, I noticed that there was this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful um, area, like all these beautiful trees and plants. And the water was flowing out of that temple, flowing out, 
just flowing out like a big river but that wasn't the water that wasn't the temple that we need to be in the temple that we are and, and notice I was a person in there I was a person walking in there I am as that person walking in this world and amongst others we are new creatures created in Christ we are in the spirit our spirit in his holy spirit which his holy spirit comes from heaven rivers of living waters this is very important for our understanding rivers of living waters flows from the the god the god of abraham isaac and jacob from the heavenly jerusalem into into us through messiah not through the broken down temple but in our new creatures that are created in Christ, not in our old man, the flesh that's dead and buried with Christ, but in the new man that's risen with Christ, we're walking with him and he's showing us our way. He's given us the directions as we are in this Ark of the covenant. Imagine like wineskin, Jesus talked about wineskin. And so we're following him. And he's getting us through the troubles that we're going through and the things that we're list that, that are trying to get in our ears. We have to hold all thoughts captive in the name of the Lord Jesus, it says in the scriptures. We have to follow Jesus in this time because this is a time of trouble. Now, he showed me that resting in him, you could focus in him because he is. we are complete in him, as my brother reminded me. We are complete in him, not in the old man, but in the new creature that he's created that's in him who is, has fulfilled all things. And he says that his gifts, God says, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased, hear him. And it says the gifts and the fullness and all of the works of the spirit are in him. So the work that that the spirit leads us to do while we're walking this life, not of the old man of the flesh man, but of the newness of life, that spirit that's in us, we are agreeing with, and we are joining with that work. And when we join with the spirit work and listen to that still small voice, and as his spirit leads us through the scriptures, washing it with the word of God, as it says, he brings us the comfort of the scriptures. Because remember, Abraham was a place of comfort. The Holy Ghost is a place of comfort. Satan and his angels and their devilish children want to bring trouble, vexation of spirit. They want to trouble you. They want to, they want to cover the lamps. They want to cover and take our crown and take any treasures that we have in Christ. So they are like wolves. They still what God gives us when we speak it to somebody they take it and they go and make it look like theirs. But they're not even saved yet. They're in unrighteousness. We are in Christ who is our righteousness. Ephesians 6 is so very clear to me that the righteousness is our breastplate. Beloved, that is Christ. <laughs> we have peace with God through him. Not through our own fleshly works because that flesh needs to be dead with Christ and buried with Christ. And the new life that we live, we live in Christ by faith remember it's faith what we cannot see now spiritually he gives us eyes sometimes some people have spiritual eyes um jesus is a spirit of prophecy it says in revelation of jesus christ so if you have the spirit if you're sealed with the spirit then you have him so let's go on hallelujah great news so if I focused on where I was walking and the serpents and all these troubles around me to get to the other side of this temple that's broken down, now I'm not in that temple. Clearly my body is whole and perfect in that place, in that spiritual place. But I'm walking through things that are broken down and all these problems and these buildings are messed up and I'm looking at people and they're messed up. This is Jerusalem, the one that the wicked, evil devil and his evil angels and Lord rebuke them and the devilish persons, their children, have broken down and destroyed. Okay, now God says to them, 
you have you have um, spoiled your own people you've spoiled or your tab or your Jesus says your um, your tabernacle is desolate all right he said that to them he said your your tabernacle is desolate you know in other words you're broken down you've broken down your own place because you have love of the things of the world love of money and all these things and you have not got love for me or love for your neighbor so they're teaching people in righteousness they're exampling because people children learn by example so, you know my mom could tell me things all the time but you know I would follow her example you know so they know this they know that using the law can enslave you also that's why they make all these man's laws they know that that man's interpretation can really defile you like the serpents Jesus talked to who were he says by your tradition you make void the law so Jesus was saying you know your interpretation your traditions your ways in Matthew 23 is destroying not just yourself but you're destroying others being a hypocrite yourself not loving God and loving your neighbor as yourself you are breaking the law and making everyone else follow your example rather than Jesus and Jesus that's why Jesus said all that went before me are thieves and ro robbers not just that because there were good prophets who led people in the right way right but how did they do that by the good shepherd they were with the good shepherd shepherd but they were they were put in Abraham's bosom okay so Jesus comes to thieve us <laughs> but it's a different kind of thieving he brings us into righteousness okay he gives us righteousness his own he covers us covers us with himself and so I hope you're following with me I hope I'm not making it too complicated so make it easy make it easy Jesus talked about the new garments that he's folding up heaven and earth and that we must anything that's not in the word of God because heaven and earth will pass away as second Peter says all the elements will burn in fervent, fervent heat and even the apostle said if this my tabernacle be dissolved I have a new habitation in heaven for me God has prepared it for me see God builds his kingdom which never perishes it's everlasting in the heavens so all these broken down temples all these things that was in Jerusalem but Jerusalem above okay but also Jerusalem below you're gonna understand in a minute because in the spiritual these people that are with us are tearing down buildings tearing people down destroying structures destroying and Satan is casting them out with the towel all right with sin and iniquity and transgression and breaking of the law and pretending like they are keeping the law that they have destroyed people they have destroyed themselves and others they close the doors of heaven Jesus said and they don't go in themselves they steal the fruit of God that's how they're thieves and robbers they steal God's fruit and put it in their barns and then they're gonna they're gonna build up here what do they do they build Babylon by oppressing Jerusalem by destroying Jerusalem people by destroying them and in doing that they're destroying the kingdom so that's why God came up with a new plan which was from the beginning because he knew this these things would happen he knew they would keep coming up and never repent and keep doing evil wicked deeds and keep spoiling the whole world you know like they did in Sodom and Gomorrah like they did in Noah's Ark you see in Noah during before Noah's Ark the angels came down the sons of God came down and laid with the daughters of men and their children became giants in the land we we have people who are like giants in the land okay so what happens with those people they what happened it says violence covered the earth all right we see that in our time too they taught them things that they were not supposed to teach them and they've done it again and they keep doing it that's why God has us in this ark because he knows that you're here with these ones that have vinegar bitter waters they want to feed you 
They want to spoil you so they can live off of you. And you'll understand that when you read Revelation and where it says they eat my people like they eat bread. The serpent was given to eat the dust of the earth and we are made out of the dust of the earth. So that'll, that'll give you an idea of what's going on in the spiritual. They encompass the camp of the saints and they're literally trying to cling to our flesh, which if you're born again, your flesh is dead and buried in the, in the graves with Jesus Christ. It's no longer I who lives, but Christ that lives in me. In the life I live, I live by the faith in the one that died for me and resurrected. Okay, he defeated death and hell. So our new life is in the new earth, in the new, um, in the new heaven is within us. Christ in us, the hope of glory, the word of God, that seed of the word that will never perish. When everything is shaken of God's mighty wind, heaven and earth, everything in heaven, everything in earth that's not built upon the rock will fall. A thousand will fall at our side and ten thousand at our right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou look and behold the reward of the wicked. Psalm 91. So as we're in the ark, they're going down in the abyss, all these wicked all around us, and they're being tossed and, and everything in the waves, and they're being tormented by the ungodly words of the ungodly men and the flood that the devil sends out, as you see in the scriptures. So our identity is not in ourselves, not in our works, but in the wonderful works of God in Christ Jesus. The seed of Christ is in us, the word of God that became flesh and dwelt among us. Hallelujah. It is in his, he is the son of man that the angels ascended, descend upon, and we are in him. He is building us up. He's the author and perfecter of our faith, it says in the scriptures. This ought to give you hope. This ought to give you some real good faith, beloved. This is stirring up your faith like never before, because we need to rest and the Lord of Sabbath, who is Jesus. Jesus said, I am the Lord of Sabbath. The scriptures say, enter into my rest. Come out of those ungodly words of the ungodly men and the ones that want to make you worry and fear and all these things. Have no courage, not be a, you know strong in the Lord, not have faith knowing what he's done for you. But the witches who continue on with their witchcraft, with their brooms, God says he's going to sweep them with the bosom of destruction. We're going to have destruction, beloved. I like Maui and like Napa earthquake and then fires in California, fires in Canada. God's warning through these wicked ones that are encompassing the camp of the saints. Okay, they are, God says Gog and Magog. We're going to go into that in a little bit. But remember, you have an innumerable company of angels who are also with us, right? who believe. So they encompass us, but there's an innumerable company of angels with us, surrounding us. And we go up through the Son of Man, through the blood and the body, through the Spirit, boldly to the throne of grace and mercy to find help in the time of what? Trouble. That's where we go. When Jesus was saying, you know, when you see the abomination that causes desolate, go up to the mountains. Who are the mountains? All the great faiths of this word are the mountains. They are a cloud of witnesses. And you know how they take pictures and they put them in the cloud? That's kind of where we are. There's people that are in the cloud. I've, I've had visions of me standing on a cloud and I'm looking at myself going, Oh, I am on the cloud of witnesses. I am in the testimony of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Um, and as a native Indian, they talk story and they saw pictures and visions and stuff like that. And I believe that's because those are gifts of God. Those are the gifts of the spirit that he gives us. Hallelujah. We give him all the praise, honor, and glory. But we rely on what Jesus has done, not on our, our gifts. We rely on the work of God through the Spirit, through Jesus Christ, the Son of Man who resurrected and we live in his temple. <laughs> okay, not in that broken down temple, that cistern that cannot hold water. Okay, because his body holds water. It doesn't pour out other than up out of our bellies and out of our mouths, rivers of living waters. This is a different way of pouring out. 
they're pouring out, it's still gonna water, but it's got poison in it. You need the, the, um, the angels, the holy angels, not the unholy angels, or not, I don't wanna call them unholy, the evil angels who God warns to repent and to offer up fruit worthy of return, returning to him with their heart. Um, but there are some that don't ever repent, it says in the scriptures. So the devil and his angels, you know, there's a place prepared for them because of unrepentance. And they don't make peace with God's people. They don't make peace with Zion, okay? The true Zion. Now, there's, Jesus said, those that say there are Jews do lie and are the synagogue of Satan. Now, there are people over there in that place called Israel who are God's people. Don't get me wrong. I love all people. I love every nation, tribe, and tongue. doesn't matter where they're from. But there are a people of his, of his curse. And these ones have no repentance. And it's, it's, he speaks about it. From the beginning, Genesis, you see the serpent was in the garden. A cursed beast. Just a little clue to what you're looking at in the scriptures. Hallelujah. So then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye, blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. But he does tell the goats to go on his left, right? We're on the right. Thank you. That's where he took me was on the right. Hallelujah. Um, so we have to rely on him and focus our, our, our eyes on him. It's about what Christ, what God did with his son, Christ, Jesus Christ for us so that we could be in the body, flesh of his flesh, bone of his bone. It's his body, not ours, because apart from him, you can do nothing. It's, it's with him, joined with him and his rivers of living waters flow through you and can come up and out without any poison in it. When you have the angels with you and God's spirit is speaking to you, it's as, G, as the father gives the word through Jesus, who is the word to the angel, to John, that was a pure flow of, of rivers of living waters. If you see in Revelation 1, that's the pure flow. That's a holy flow that doesn't have any serpents in it. See, I got out of that temple. And then God showed me a vision of that temple and there were men holding the doors closed. They were trying to not let people out. They wanted people to go in and get poisoned and worry and fear about your sin and, 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 and your conscience to be totally focused on your sin and how you have to do this, you have to do that. You blah, blah, blah. And it's like a, a treadmill you're on. It's so uncomfortable to be on that treadmill. Get off the treadmill. Cease from your own works. Let the work of God and the word of God feed you because we have to wash by the word. This is the next video I'm going to be bringing here pretty soon. I'm running out of time on this. Um, that word that flows perfectly from heaven, that rivers of living waters, the spirit and the gifts that are in Christ that he has prepared for us from the foundation of the world as the scriptures say he has given us gifts without repentance hallelujah so those gifts are without repentance um so we're going to talk about the drinking of that water and the womb that holds that water remember he says mother of us all jerusalem above mother of us all and jesus said those who do the father of the father's will are my mother my brother my you see you get the point those are like John who was doing the, the father's will. The first thing is you got to believe to even be able to, no, that's not true, but to, to hold that water. You can know the word or God can put the word in you, but to have that flowing through you, you have to be a new creature. You have to be created new in Christ. And he's holding that new creation until he gives us that until he brings that, he says he brings it with him, that, that incorruptible and immortal. He brings it with him, that he, that Christ in us, the hope of glory, that glory will come. His countenance will cover us and, and we will change the corruption in, to incorruption. Even though we could say we already did, um, we're like ambassadors in this covering. We groan within ourselves to get out of it. I mean, I don't know about you, but I've been groaning to get out of it. He has new garments coming, beloved. And boy, are they beautiful. 
I'm going to stop this one. Look for the next one for our Rivers of Living Waters information about the womb. Agape love.